We've been using functions such as print and input since the beginning of the course. We've also seen the examples from the book in which the function named main was used, and we called the main function to execute its code. Functions are called by using their names followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we place expressions that the function needs us to send them. Not all functions require these additional expressions known as parameters, but most useful functions have parameters. Some functions return values, such as input and the square root function from the math library, and other functions such as print just perform some operations without returning a value. If a function does return a value, you usually either assign it to a variable or use the result as an operand of another expression. Object methods are a variation on functions that are automatically sent information. For example, if we have a point object p and call p.getx, we are calling the getx method of the point class and sending it the data for the point p. A function is essentially a group of statements that you give a name, and you can execute those statements all at once by calling the function with the name you gave it. In general, if you find yourself repeating the exact same code or very similar code multiple times in your program, you should consider making a function for that code. Here are the main reasons you should use functions in your programs. The first is known as the DRY principle, which is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. The more code you have, the more work it is to understand it. And if the repeated code needs changed, you need to change it each place. This has the potential for errors. You might miss a place that needs changed or accidentally make different changes to the repeated code at the different locations. You can reuse functions. For example, if every time we needed to calculate the square root of a value, you needed to rewrite the code, that would be tedious and error prone. Since the square root is a commonly used mathematical function, Python has added the square root function as part of the language in the math module. If you need to calculate a square root, you do not need to write the code yourself. Instead, you just import the math library and call the function. Another reason to use functions is that when you're given a large problem, it can be daunting to determine how to solve the entire problem. Breaking the large problem up into a number of smaller problems makes it easier for you to focus on solving one smaller problem at a time, and also helps make your code simpler to understand. Testing if an individual function works is generally much simpler than testing if the entire program works correctly. By writing the smaller functions and testing each function separately, it is easier to make certain each part of the program works correctly when you use all the functions together. We'll start by looking at one simple example to demonstrate the usefulness of functions, and then in later videos we'll learn more details about functions. As we continue learning more about Python, we'll see these reasons for using functions put into practice as we write more complicated programs. Here is a program that prints out the first two verses of Jingle Bells. I picked this song because it is well known and the lyrics are in the public domain so there are no copyright issues when using them. There are actually four verses, although for space reasons I am only showing two verses here. After each verse the chorus is sung. Since we need to sing the chorus twice, we could copy and paste the code that prints out the chorus. We run it and notice that it works but now we notice we made a typo in the chorus, so we have to remember to fix it both places and make the correct fix two times. And if we had all four verses of the song, we would need to make the fix in four places. A better solution would have been to make a function for the chorus instead of copying and pasting it. We'll get rid of the second copy, and then make a function using the def keyword as we've seen before with the main function, and name it chorus. Note that we put parentheses after the name of the function in a colon. The colon is an indication that the next line of code should be indented an extra level from the current level. In Python, this is always the case. The next line is always at the same indentation level as the previous line unless the previous line has a colon. And if a line ends with a colon, the next line is always indented one more indentation level. We can select the code for the course and press the tab key to indent it. Next, I'll fix the typo once. We don't need to, but for readability, I'll cut and paste the function and put it at the top of the file. Now we'll add the calls to the chorus function in the appropriate locations in the code, and then we'll run it and see that it still works. So to recap, we create a function by using the def keyword, followed by the name we are giving the function, and then parentheses and a colon. The code indented underneath the def keyword is the body of the function. Defining a function does not cause the body of the function to be executed. If you want the body of the code to be executed, you must call the function which you do without using the def keyword. You put the name of the function and parentheses where you want to call the function. When a function is called, the program pauses there and begins executing the function. When the function completes, it continues executing the code after the function was called. 
So after printing the lyrics to the first verse, we call the chorus function, which executes all the print functions in it, and then it continues executing the lines here to print the second verse. To continue cleaning up the code, we'll make a function for each verse and add a main function that calls the verse and chorus functions. Finally, we add a main function that calls each of these functions. This process of improving the quality of the code without changing what it does is known as refactoring. While these changes may actually make the program longer, it is now more organized and easier to see what happens. We print the lyrics to verse 1, then the chorus, then verse 2, and then the chorus again. When writing the main function, we no longer need to worry about the details of how each function does its work. We just need to call each function. You may not see the benefit of doing this now, but as you write more complex programs, it should become more obvious that breaking your code down into multiple functions makes it easier to read and easier to follow what it does. Let's debug it so you can see the execution in action. We'll set a breakpoint in the main function at verse 1. When we begin executing, it moves past all the function definitions and calls the main function and stops at the breakpoint. We'll now use step over, and you'll see that it executed the entire body of the verse 1 function. If we want to step through each statement inside a function, we can use step into at the function call as we'll do here with the chorus. Step into pauses at the first line of the function body, so we can now go through it statement by statement. Note that stepping into the print function does not allow us to see the individual statements that make up the print function since it is built into Python. Instead, stepping into a built-in function acts as if you had stepped over it. After stepping over a couple of the print functions, we will use step out which completes executing the function you are in and stops back at the completion of the call. We'll press step over one more time to complete the execution of the call. And now we can either step over or step into the verse 2 function or resume. We'll step over verse 2 and step over the chorus function. And now we finish the execution of the main function and we're back at completing the call to the main function. We'll press step over to complete the execution of the main function and the program ends.